All right, good. So I've got my surface here. I placed this light, literally just sat the light to the side, on the side of this table here. Okay, I'm going to place my product here and then we're going to see the different ways you can make it look. Okay, now first product of the day is I've chosen something super basic because if you can make a basic thing look good, you can make anything look good. Tabby kitten. Tabby kitten cup. <laughs> good. Now let's, let's, how do we work out photographing this object? Now, first of all, most obviously, let's just, you know, put a base here to photograph it on. Because right now this is just a table from a house. All right. Now we can play with this more later, but right now let's just start off simple. So let's just start off with a simple white surface to photograph this cup. Okay. Now you can just get a roll of plain white paper, roll it out. Okay. You can do that. Um, although if you want to take it sort of a bit more advanced than just normal paper, you want to get something that's not going to like crinkle so easily. Cause like, you know, oh, if it slips or if it tears accidentally, oh, there's your background, you know? So forget about that. Go to an art or crafts shop and get yourself a big piece of white card. And this is like thick, this is like cardboard, you know? So it's actually got some structure, some strength to it, yeah? And we're, we're gonna use this as our basic um, surface to photograph on. So we just grab this, and we're just gonna place this down here. All right. Ooh, this looks more professional already. And we place our little cup here. And we can see what we can do with this. Now, first style of light that we've got here, you just position your white backgrounds, your white surface, though, so that basically it's going to cover everything. Okay. So we've got a cup here. Okay. I got my camera here. First off, before we play with the light too much, let's just get our settings right for this exposure, for the brightness of this particular light. Because the further away it is, the less, you know, the, 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 the less light reaches it. So it's less strong. So Let's just say you've set up your space with the light this close. Well, okay, we need to change first set our camera settings so that this light here is not too bright or not too dark. Okay. And then everything else comes after. But first, let's just take a look at this. Okay. I'm just going to take a test shot here. I don't exactly know my settings, but let's just take a test shot of Tabby Kitten. And there you go. Look at that. Look at that. I would not use that ever. Let's check the settings on this and find out why. So, well, the main problem here is that the ISO was set at 3200, which is super sensitive. We have a bright light here and yet the sensitivity setting in here is super, is super high, which means of course it's going all white. It's too much light. So to correct that, we're going to bring the sense the ISO down. I'm going to bring that way down. Take it down to like 200. Take that shot again. That's more like it. Look at that. That is that, 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 that is far better. That is much uh, better exposure. Now, if you go down too far, for example, I'm going to close the aperture a lot. This aperture setting right here is F9, which is quite a long ways closed. Let me take a photo. And look at that. Now that's too dark. So now to find the correct exposure, if, if this was on fully automatic mode, which all cameras do have a fully automatic mode, the camera would automatically adjust your ISO, your aperture and your shutter speed together to get the brightness right. But you wouldn't know uh, until after you took the shot, what it does, what the computer inside here decided that the aperture should be, the shutter speed or the ISO should be, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't care. It doesn't care. It's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It doesn't care about human life. Okay. It's just trying to get the right exposure, not too bright, not too dark. And it doesn't care what settings it has to do to make it like that. 
It just thinks you want a correctly exposed photo, which for your everyday snaps, that's probably, that's probably fine, but not when we want control over our thing. So we set the settings manually, and then the way that you know if your exposure is correct is simply by when you're even looking through the, view, the viewfinder, meaning the little screen here, or even on the back screen or on the top screen, there's a little meter. It's got a plus at one end and a minus at the other end, and then like a dot in the middle. And then you, you will set your settings and then you point it, you point your camera at the thing and you will see in real time this little meter. And if it's too far to say, you know, the minus sign, it means your photo is going to be too dark. If it's too far to the plus, it means it's going to be too bright. So all you do is you play with your ISO and also just, even if you don't want to use this meter, you take photos and just judge with your eye. It's not as um, exact if you judge with your eye, but after you've done this a million trillion times, your eye judgment is pretty good. But until then, just use a little meter and it will tell you if it's too bright or too dark. Okay, good. So now I'm just going to Take some more shots until, until this exposure looks correct. Okay, good. So that's still too dark. Tabby kitten. Tabby kitten, you're already making me angry. Let me just take a shot here. Okay, good. So you're a bit dark. Good. Uh, my shutter speed is 100, aperture f9. I'm going to take the aperture. I'm going to open up the aperture a bit more to 5.6 instead of 9. Don't worry about these numbers, man. Like, literally, yeah. Yeah, I'm just making the aperture more open. Good. Okay, I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to take my ISO to 400 instead of 200. That is doubling the uh, sensitivity. And here's a shot. Good. Good. Now, if you look at the white. Well, yeah, given this is a white background, okay, good. The white... Obviously the kitten face, it's dark, but the whiteness of the surface here, good, it looks correctly white like it should do. Now, of course, the cup looks ugly, but now that you've got your exposure, all you do is change your angle of the light until it looks good. So, instead of having it here, I'm gonna take my light and bring it around more to the front. Let me take the shot again. See, totally different, totally different. Now the shadows are casting away because you've changed the angle. All right. Good. Now, as you can uh, now see, the game here is uh, what, what, what's the style that you want to create with this cup? Because everywhere where you place the light, the shadow is going to obviously cast in the opposite direction. What if you don't want so many shadows, man? What if? Good. So obviously, if you don't want shadows, well, you need more light coming from the opposite direction. So here we go. All right, I'm placing the light back here. Let me take this shot. Okay, good. Now, to get light coming from the other side, we can put another light or, real simple way, get a piece of white card, get something to hold the card up, such as just clamp, she's a little clamp, so then that's going to hold up, stand up uh, all by itself like a big boy. Put this on the other side. Now what's happening is the light from this side is hitting this surface, and because this surface is, is white too, it acts as a reflector. It's called a reflector, and what it does is it reflects back from the same light onto the onto the other side and it lifts it lightens up those dark shadows so now we take a shot here and boom you've handled that shadow problem take another one see what i mean so literally and this is the most basic lighting ever it's one light and then you just fiddle around and play with a reflector on the other side to get it how you like it. Understand? Now, if we look at these photos, 
You can obviously see from the angle that I'm shooting at right now, this is big dark background because this thing is not covering as much of the background as it should, and so I'm seeing off into the darkness of this room. So, well, there's just, you can just play around, my friends. You can get some white, you can put it in the background there, you've got, you've covered up that white background. Another good way, more professional way actually, is to get this piece of white, um, you know, board, and get one that's flexible enough so that you can do this. You just curve up one side of it, all right? Now, for an example's sake, if I just, I wonder how I can shoot this. If I just, this is really dodgy right now, but I'm just showing you. Real quick, simple lesson. You just lift it up, so then you can, you can it kind of fills in the, all the background, and there you go. Look, see? And the background just sort of fades off. Nothing special. Understand? And also, because this is white as well, boom, you've got a reflector there. And it would just fit, and it just makes the shadow soft and it looks good. That's I mean that's that's acceptable. That is basic. <laughs> this is the most basic thing that you can have. Get yourself one soft box, get yourself a big board that's flexible and curve up one side of it, and everything that you put in the middle here, everything you put in this space, man, it's gonna have gorgeous soft light. The shadows are gonna be soft, and so long as you don't shoot at an angle where you're seeing off into the, uh, the, the background of the room and you're only just seeing uh, this white card, it looks like there's beautiful white backgrounds where it's just an infinite whiteness behind it, and there's this lovely shadow. And uh, that's Tabby Kitten for you, the first example. <sighs> I need a coffee.